Mr. Scott, welcome. Gentlemen, recognized. Thank you very much, yes, Mr. Sir. Chairman, uh, Ranking Member uh, McGovern, um, other members of the committee. Um, when you talk about problems with the health care system, I think it's instructive to look back to see what the situation was before the Affordable Care Act passed. Uh, listening to people, you'd think costs weren't going up. Costs were going through the roof. People with pre-existing conditions couldn't get insurance. Women were paying more than men. And every year, millions of people were losing their insurance every year. Since, th since then, the costs have gone up. But at the lowest rate in 50 years, people with pre-existing conditions can get insurance at the standard rate. Women are not paying more than men. And instead of millions of people every year losing their insurance, 20 million more people have insurance. In addition to that, we've got consumer protections. The uh, full name of the Affordable Care Act is the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. And Affordable Care Act. We have um, uh, no caps on what insurance company has, has to pay. They can't cancel your policy uh, for anything other than non-payment. Uh, you get uh, prevention with no care copay and cancer screenings, no copays and deductibles. There are minimum coverage requirements. They have essential coverage. Those up to 26 can stay on the parents' uh, policy. We're closing the donut hole. All of that has um, gone on since the um, Affordable Care Act. And to show how difficult it is, you just have to look at the so-called replacement plan that uh, we may be voting on. I know it's going under amendments uh, late at night in the middle of the dark, so we're not sure exactly what we're voting on. But what the CBO scored uh, concluded that 24 million fewer people will have insurance, uh, that people will be paying more for policies that don't deliver as, as, as much. For seniors particularly, the costs will skyrocket out of control. And in fact, the prediction that the rates may go down in a few years is a result of the conclusion that so many seniors won't be able to buy insurance at all and won't be in the insurance pool. Therefore, the insurance pool will be younger and it will be cheaper for those that can actually afford it um, if they're not old and uh, close to Medicare and particularly low income. And so I think that's not only we're in a better position now, but if we pass the pending bill, we'll be a lot worse off than we are. This association plan is a, is a program that has been studied for years, and everybody, everybody that's studied it has concluded that it's a bad idea. The, under the Affordable Care Act, essentially everybody pays average. And this is a, arithmetic is, is the problem here. If you get some group to pay less than average, then because of arithmetic, everybody else is going to pay more. And the association plans, quite frankly, will always work. Because if you can draw out a little group, they'll always pay less than the ones they left behind. Because if the bid comes in higher than average, they're going to jump back into the insurance pool. If it comes in lower, they'll enjoy the low rates until somebody gets sick. And then the rates go above average, everybody jumps back into the average pool. So they'll always work, but while they're working, everybody else uh, will pay more. Now, there are other problems. So, so the, um, the net insurance, everybody's paying the same. You got a little group over here pays a little less, everybody else pays more. There are other little problems with it. One is the, they're, they're essentially unregulated. And so you may have solvency problems. What happens when the group goes, goes broke? Can't meet its bills. Well, you had um, uh, pro uh, programs like that in the past, and it wasn't unusual for them to go broke. And who pay after the, you can't pay the bills, who gets stuck? Is it the hospital doesn't get paid? Is it the employee all of a sudden has a $20,000 bill that they thought they were insured for and can't pay? I don't know. Um, the uh, What kind of insurance do you get? Is it cheaper because um, you have a younger, healthier group, or is it cheaper because you don't get as good coverage? Now, a lot of ways you can save money. You pull out a group with just men. Young men don't have maternity benefits. Well, that's, that's cheaper. But uh, if, if that's what you're, what you're doing and leaving everybody behind with the higher bills, that's not as a uh, good idea. Um, we talked about negotiating uh, better prices the negotiation in the marketplace, uh, because of the competition and because if you increase your, your cost a couple of dollars, that may put you so, down, so far down on the list uh, that nobody wants to buy, nobody will even see your product. There's a heavy emphasis on competition in, in the present situation, and 
like I said, uh, everybody pays average. And if you're going to have some scheme like this where some pay less, everybody else is going to pay more. Now, that's why this is a, a, a bad idea, Mr. Chairman, and I would hope that you would not uh, report a rule to allow this bill to come up. 